Joining the panel now, Shadow Climate Change and Energy Minister Ted O'Brien, thanks for your time. Do we want to start on the good news? Power prices in a lot of places heading the right way, at least from the middle of the year? Well, Tom, I'm, I'm a Queenslander, and so uh, what I found out today is that our power prices are going up next year. So too will the power prices in regional New South Wales. For those that are getting some sort of marginal relief, what it does confirm to them is that Labor's promise of a $275 reduction is dead, gone. And if you look at what Labor had promised and what they will have to pay by next year, mm. in some parts of the country, the difference is up to an additional $1,000. So the hardship for families is, is terrible. And if you look at the number of families on hardship arrangements that just can't pay their bills, an additional 500 families every single week mm. have gone on hardship arrangements since Labor came into office. I mean, that's like okay. a suburb a week. And so Australia. on what you'll do, will you have modelling on what your policies will do to power prices? Will that be released ahead of the election? Well, there's no doubt that our approach is to put the consumer at the centre. So that would include modelling, and, though? And, and, and putting consumer at the centre... Um, means we've got to be focused on getting prices down. Um, and, of course, we are looking at the best ways to do that, which is why we often talk about having an all-of-the-above approach, because what we've learned from overseas is not one technology can do the trick. It's a matter of what is the mix of technologies to drive pr prices down the short term and then over the medium to long. What sort of... Would you like to see energy bill relief in the budget? Last time it was only for... Family tax benefit part B, cup families on 156,000 maximum. Would you like to see that extended? Would you like to see direct subsidies? Do you think they need to address this in the budget? Uh, Andrew, I think there's no doubt that cost of living is issue number one, two, and three, and therefore the onus is on the government to be addressing these things. Um, I'm Through not going, direct I'm not, subsidies? I'm not going to preempt, though, um, what the coalition wants or doesn't want. Um, that the fact of the matter is we're in opposition, so we'll wait to see what the government puts forward. But we have said from the get-go that we'll be constructive where we can, critical where we must. And so we will look at everything in good faith because families are hurting, businesses are closing. Do you concede their caps have worked a little bit in terms of not the price not continuing to skyrocket? Uh, the evidence doesn't bear that out. I know the talking points from Labor do, but we haven't seen any evidence that suggests that. Uh, at best, Labor um, tries to talk about a correlation. They, they brought in these caps and, wow, well, wholesale prices now seem to be a bit tamed. But if you actually break that down into def different energy sources, um, especially gas, um, what you see is, in fact, it had nothing to do with the intervention of Labor. In fact, Labor's interventions are only going to get prices higher over the long term. You might have just missed it there, but the Reserve Bank Governor, Michelle Bullock, was asked about the default market offer today. She said, in, in a sense, it is good news in the fight against inflation that we are seeing the big rises come down. We are seeing some reductions, not in South East Queensland, I take your point, but in other areas, people will see a modest reduction. What do you say to her point, that this does help in the inflation fight, today's numbers? Well, um, while I didn't see what she said, um, I'm very mindful that she has spoken previously about her concerns about homegrown inflation. Um, in other words, as a direct consequence of actions of the Albanese government, prices of things are going up. Now, um, prices of electricity over the next financial year um, won't go as high in some places as the last two years under Labor. So to that extent, of course, it, it's much better than another sort of 20 plus percent. Um, and so, um, but it doesn't take away from the fact that a lot of places are going to be paying more. And, you know, this promise of a $275 reduction, the question I've got as of today, this is what changes. Today was the moment of truth. This was the moment because whenever we criticised the government for that promise, they said, wait, wait, we're going to do that in the year 2025. Well, this year, today, we find out what the prices are likely to be in 2025. Yet, the government still will not concede that it won't meet that. So but they could point, still say the next figure out next year will also dictate 2025 prices, which should come out before the election. So no one thinks they're on target now, but that the figure next year will be the final decider on that, won't it? No, no, Tom. I mean, if anything, they could argue that, well, today is a draft. But they said by 2025. 
for oh. and, and and May will be a final. Mm. Their commitment was by 2025. Yeah. Today we heard the prices by 2025. For half of the year. And, and, and therefore, um, what we are looking at is no longer just a broken promise. As of today, this is a deliberate lie. But this cha- this changes year. things. This changes things. This no, is okay, okay, no, one, no one says they're on track right lie. now, but when the decision comes out next year, that will be for July 20. 20- 2025. That's still 2025. If they somehow got there through some miracle, you'd have to say that is 2025 and that's what the prices are as of July 1. Well, if if their argument now is the second half of 2025, suddenly everyone's power bills could be reduced by up to $1,000, well, come out and state that. Yes. But they're, they're just going to ground. I think everybody... Look, everybody knows. It's, 